Welcome. How do you know if you're dating a narcissist? What is a narcissist anyway? I mean, we talk about it all the time right now in our culture. Well, by definition, a narcissist is a person who has an excessive interest in him or herself. Now, we all have some, hopefully we all have confidence. And not all of these signs that I'm going to talk about actually mean that the person you're with is a narcissist. They often need many of them. But stay tuned. After the show reel, I'll talk about seven signs to watch for. So number one, does a person you're with always feel entitled to do things or have things from you that they wouldn't give you back? Do they look for special treatments and ask you or maybe demand that you treat them in a certain way that they're not really interested in giving back? That's one sign that that person could be a little bit narcissistic. Could also mean they're a little insecure. Sometimes those things coincide. Number two, what do their fantasies look like about themselves, their appearance? Do they have very superficial ideas of who they are, what they want to be, how they want everyone around them to be perceived? Because one sign of a narcissist is that image, right? And now I want to say narcissists aren't born, they're created. And often they're created because they're taught to always look at their external ex external appearance and that their internal selves aren't important. So in other words, maybe their parents were always putting pressure on them to be good or have good grades or look a certain way or perform a certain way and then invalidated their feelings or verbally abused them or told them they weren't valid or they weren't good enough, right? So narcissists can actually come from this place of like self-loathing and this emptiness inside that they can't fill. So as I go through, as your person a narcissist, I also want you to understand you don't have to stay with them. They also deserve some empathy and they need some healing. Number three, they may dole out criticism, but they can't take it, right? And part of this is that level of insecurity and that emptiness. They want to be critical of others because that's how they were taught. That's how they were raised. And they can't take it back because of that level of emptiness and insecurity inside themselves. And similarly, they may throw temper tantrums or get angry really easily when you're not doing exactly what they want or exactly in the way they want it. Because once again, they're feeling invalidated often. They're feeling not good enough. So they'll throw those temper tantrums to try to get you to tell them that they're good, to try to give them their way, right? To help to have you go out of your way and tell them that it's okay, I'll do it this way for you, I'll help you, I'll support you, you're valuable, you're loved, you're cute, you're sexy, you're whatever it is that they're asking for over and over and over again. When they don't get it, they use what we call negative love. They use negative ways of getting that love, of feeling that love, instead of just asking for the love because they don't feel it inside of themselves. Number five, they may be very, very jealous. They're jealous of others, how you interact with others. Maybe they think you're flirting too much. Maybe they think that you think somebody else is better than them. And that just really highlights their jealousy. And then they may take it out in some of these other ways or in a form of gaslighting, which is our next step. Is your partner gaslighting you? And once again, this is another term we throw out a lot. What is gaslighting? Gaslighting is when your person, somebody else, makes you doubt your own reality. So that could be that you say, hey, you treated me really crappy the other day when you told me that I was stupid. And they'll deny it. Like, I never said that. You're misinterpreting things. You're making up stories, right? So they're trying to encourage you. They're denying their behavior and encouraging you to doubt yourself as well. Like sometimes to the point that you almost like, I want to record every single conversation we have so I can show them that I'm not going crazy, that they're actually saying these things or doing these things to me. And often, number seven is that they're not very loyal because they can't be. They need energy. They need affirmation from everybody else because they can't feel it inside themselves. And instead of looking inside themselves and getting the help or the therapy or doing emotional freedom techniques or the journaling or the self-awareness or the healing that they need to do, they try to grab the love. They're almost like energy vampires sometimes where they try to grab the love and feel the love from everybody else. 
So they demand for certain words to be said, for certain actions to be taken, to make them feel special, to make them feel important as if they're the center of the universe, because that's the only way they feel validated. And it can be sad, but it also means you don't have to put up with it. So in summary, remember, people can have one or two of these things, or everybody can actually do these things at certain times in their life or at certain situations, intentionally or unintentionally. But you want to look for multiple signs. There's books out there. I th uh, there was a woman that wrote a book. I can't remember her name right now. Talked about 30 signs to spot a narcissist. And she says they need six of them in order to really be defined as a narcissist. But this should give you a little bit of a clue to start watching for. And if you feel like your own feelings aren't valid, that they're telling you that you're not valuable, that they're saying, oh, you're doing X, Y, Z, and they're trying to change your reality and bring you into theirs, always asking for those affirmations, but never giving it back to you, always wanting to be the center of attention, you could be dealing with a narcissist. So just remember you're loved, you're loving, and you're lovable, and you get to make choices for yourself. By the way, when I mean choices for yourself, I mean you get to decide how you wanna deal with these people, how much love and compassion you wanna show them, and whether or not it's worth it for your own soul and spirit to stay with something like that. For most people, it's not. The end.